Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Presbyterian Church this morning. We are so glad to see all of your faces here, and we are so glad that you have been safe and healthy, and we will pray that we all continue to be so. Welcome. Well, as always, before we begin our formal worship service, we do have a few announcements for you. So I invite you at this time to take those bulletins and open them wide up. And you will notice inside you have a yellow slip of paper. This paper helps us with contact tracing. So we do invite you to please write your name there at the bottom. It also does something else for us. It helps us to remember that you were here today. If you could fill this out either now in your seats or as you leave, we do have some pens here at our offertory boxes. And you can either leave these in your seat or at those offertory boxes and we will collect them later. Also, you'll see we have an announcement page on the inside of your bulletin. And we are currently nominate, nominating Volunteers of the Year. This is a really special thing that we get to do here where we reach out and appreciate those who have done spectacular work within the church in the last 12 months. Here you can see a few of the names that have been nominated in the past. So if you would like to nominate someone that you have noticed in this past year, please write a brief narrative of why you are nominating them and give that to Karen Berg in our front office. You can see her email address is listed there. Also, due to the Omicron variant, we have delayed the startup of children and youth Sunday school in the mornings. This is to keep everyone safe as the Omicron virus is passing rather quickly through our school systems. So on February 6th is when we plan to open our doors and get things ramped up. Now if you have a student who is 8th grade through 12th grade and they might be interested in confirmation, we do have that. It has already begun, but we are welcoming more on board. So if you have a student who's interested in that, it is primarily online, it is self-paced, and trust me, it's going to be a blast this year. So if you know of any teens that are interested, let us know. We do still have youth group happening on Sunday evenings. However, tonight we will not be having it as our youth director is currently out of town. Below these announcements, you can see all the places that you can visit us on our social media. We do have Instagram and Facebook, and we also have a link tree if you are interested to find our website and any other places that we might be mentioned. Um, we do have a need of prayer this morning. We do extend prayers of support to Randy Stewart and his family following the death this week of his brother Tim and his father George, who played as a part of the First Presbyterian Church brass group a few years ago. The memorial service will be held this Saturday at 1 p.m. at the Bryan Memorial Funeral Home, if you are interested. Um, if you have any questions after the service, you can't remember where it was or when, please let either Pastor Ted or myself know. If you are visiting for the first time or if you are a repeat visitor, welcome. We're so glad that you are here and we hope that our long-standing church members will be able to greet you after the service. If you have any questions or you might be interested in either prayer or maybe even joining our church formally, um, you can see that my email and Pastor Ted's email are listed on the back of your bulletins and we are always down to talk with you or go out for coffee or whatever. <laughs> we love getting in touch with you. So please let us know. Do we have any other announcements before we begin our worship? All right, friends, let us praise God.
It's okay, you can clap. <laughs> Y'all couldn't see it, but there's some like silent clapping here on the front. So. Would you join me today in our opening sentences and then our hymn number 805, Come Sing to God. These are our opening sentences. Welcome to worship this morning. The Spirit of God is upon us. This is a holy day, and we are a holy people. The joy of God is our strength. All of us, with all our gifts, we are the body of Christ. Would you stand and join in singing together hymn 805, Come Sing to God, stanzas 1, 3, and 4. let us join our voices in prayer together. Merciful God, we praise you that your faithfulness is from everlasting to everlasting. How often, though, we settle into the wreckage of our brokenness. We sit in the discomfort of what has come to pass, while our longing for wholeness, peace, and harmony in love has grown weary and dull. When overwhelmed and in need of assurance, we sometimes are timid to admit this need. Lord, forgive us our waning vigor, our leaving behind your gift of boldness from faith and all our sin. Enliven us with your hope again so that we live each day in the way and spirit of Jesus Christ. Let us receive with gladness the powerful words of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thank Praise God for whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures
requested by Emily is, Our God is an awesome God. You may know that chorus. It's hymn number 616 in our hymnal. We're going to sing it through several times, and I invite you to join us. Let us hear God's word reading from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 1 to 3, then skipping to 5 and 6, then to 8 and 10. All the people gathered together into the square in front of the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. This was the first day of the seventh month. He read from it, facing the square before the water gate, and read from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, the people stood up. Then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. Then they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. 
Then he said to them, Go your way. Eat the fat and drink the sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our story today opens upon a scene in Jerusalem after the first fall of the temple in the 6th century before Christ. The home that the Jews once knew is in ruins, and today, after all those years of exile by the Babylonians, all the people gather to find once again their foundation, which they will rebuild upon. Now, their history, culture, traditions, and values had been stripped away when the Babylonians had conquered them many, many years ago. And for so long, they felt alone and abandoned by God. The ruins of their heritage reminded them of their sin, their frailty, and their broken past with God. The people had hope. And they began to rebuild, but stones and mortar are only materials to crumble again if the foundation and their meaning is lost. So the people, they call upon Ezra, who is a scribe and a priest, to bring the word of God to them in this needing moment. Ezra is making his way through the crowds, the heavy scroll of the Torah in his arms. And he approaches the main gathering place by one of the city's gates. And he climbs onto the stage made just for this event. Remember, the whole city is in ruins. Nothing was left behind. So they put together this stage for him. And he goes up there and he looks upon the faces of all those who would come and listen to hope to understand. Now this is such a significant moment because traditionally the Torah was only read within the temples and only in the presence of men. But today there were women and children also and interpreters to make the word accessible in Aramaic so that the people may internalize the word of God. See, the Torah was not understood by all the people, but today... Today it was made accessible. Now as Ezra began to read to them, the people, they began to weep and cry. The word had been absent from their lives for so long, and here it was, like a shepherd guiding them into the ways of love and life, that they may know God more fully. And they were filled with hope and happiness and love and gratitude. They were weeping tears of joy. Have you ever cried because something was just so beautiful? It just made you happy. Why do we cry on wedding days? Why do we cry when someone has been missing for so long and we finally see them again? Why do we weep when we see our soldiers come home from war? We cry for love. This is what the people of Jerusalem were experiencing that day. They knew that God was present with them again. And they looked past all the pain, the infidelity in faith, and the terrors that they had faced. And they lived in this moment, just brimming over with love. And Ezra looks out upon them and he says, Stop crying! Rejoice! It is time to eat and to drink and to be merry together. This is a tradition that we still uphold today. How many potlucks have we had in this church? Am I right? <laughs> we are called to be happy together because God is with us, and that is what we call fellowship. Many scholars comment that this passage mentions the events of having all the people of God in one place. Several times in order to convey its importance, you see, the church, fellowship, and faith, 
They cannot be done alone. We don't come to church by ourselves, right? We don't do church alone. We are called to be together. And not only some of us, not only a select few, all of us. And so all these people came together in this moment, and Ezra began to read the words, and the people shouted, Amen! Amen! Meaning to say, thank God and so be it. That is what amen means, so be it. Now for a people who felt lost in the word of God, they finally found themselves in God again. And they saw for the first time a way back to their true home, their sense of home. And that home is in God, in the Spirit. It is so clear that with a gathering like this filled with so much enthusiasm, the Spirit is surely there. So this passage begs us to ask this question. Why is fellowship so important? Now, as I mentioned, we cannot do church alone, much less build our faith flying solo. These people were trying not only to rebuild their nation, but to rebuild their culture, their sense of identity and hope for the future from the scraps of a terrible, rotten past. It is hard for many of us to imagine the scale of this hope. We struggle to rebuild in our workplaces, our homes, or even our church in times of transition and change. But this, this was so much bigger. This was a nation founded in God. Their very identity existed in this thing which they had lost and felt abandoned by for so many generations. So let's put this into perspective. Sometimes the little happenings in our lives can feel like we're building an entire nation on our own. Every single one of us in this room has had that experience of feeling like it's us versus the world. I have moved nine times in the past 12 years. Nine times. That's comparable to somebody in the military. Now, I'm sure that we all, even those of us who have lived in the same home our entire lives, if we have ever moved a college student into or out of a dorm room, you will know what I am talking about. Or if you have ever moved your parent or your aunt or your uncle out of their longtime home into a new place, an independent living facility, or simply moved their things out of the home in which they passed in, you will know how much work it is. Going through every little knick-knack that you have compiled over the years and deconstructing the furniture just to load it all up and put it all together again on the other end. Now the reason that this example comes to my mind is because I am actually moving now. And I want to pause for a moment and say, Thank you. All of you who came out to the new house and wrote blessings on the wood frame of it, that house is complete. It was closed on on Thursday, and we are moving. So thank you to all of you who came out to bless it. But now we're in the thick of it, right? We're taking apart everything. We're putting everything into boxes. And even after church today, my car right now is filled with pieces of furniture and all sorts of goodies <laughs> that I'm going to haul over to that place. Now, as I pack these boxes and disassemble my furniture, I think of all the moves that I've had in the past. And if you've ever had a bad moving experience, you know that you just don't forget that. Well, when I moved from Michigan to Virginia Beach, which was my last parish, I remember being so proud. You know, I was this big independent woman. I was going to do it all by myself. I don't need no man, okay? And I was determined. I was going to do everything with my own hands. I didn't need any help from 
from anybody. Now, every move is an opportunity to begin again. New place, new everything. So this was how I was going to define myself. I needed this. And I'm a seasoned veteran of all things. Packing boxes, Goodwill, Craigslist, even Ikea. And oh my goodness, Ikea. Now, if you know Ikea, you know. Now, we got an Ikea down in Houston, and we've got an Ikea up in Dallas, I believe. But if you know anything about Ikea, you know that when you pick up that manual for how to build your piece of furniture, there's no words in it. There's just pictures, right? And on the front page, actually, if you look at the front of your bulletin, you will see two Ikea men with some lumber and one with like a nail behind his ear. That is actually from an Ikea building manual. Now this is how they tell you how many people that you're going to need to build a piece of furniture. And if you don't pay attention to every single piece, you're going to be on your knees praying to God. <laughs> so here I am, I'm moving into my new tiny little place in Virginia Beach. And I have all this Ikea stuff still in the boxes and leave it to this one roaring independent woman. I look at that manual. It's got three men on it, not two, okay? And I'm like, I got this. I'm three men built in the one woman right here. So I looked at it and I said, bring it on. Now, friends, the amount of rage that I still carry when I reflect upon the construction of my queen-size bed frame is downright biblical, okay? I chose one very hot, very humid night in Virginia Beach, and I chose to pour not only two hours of sweat and blood, truthfully, it was more like three to four, but let's be honest, I'm too proud to really carry that around with me. Now, the tears of what should have been 10 minutes and the parts that didn't match that should have, that is still fresh in my mind. And that very first night when I thought, that was a breeze, right? I did this. Look at what I did. Right around 2 a.m., I woke up with my feet straight up in the air and my head on the ground. Now this had been the move where everything and anything that could have gone wrong absolutely went wrong. I mean, they lost my entire moving truck for two days, okay? So everything could have gone wrong. The bed was the last thing I had to put together and this was the icing on the cake. Now putting together my tiny apartment, it certainly felt to me like reconstructing the temple and a nation's whole identity. Now the next day, one of the church families, they stopped by to see how I was doing, and deep down, I think they knew that they needed to come. Now the father, he entered the apartment, and he wanted to check on my progress. And he put a firm hand on the headboard of that bed, and he just gave it a little shake. And there was this giant And he looked at me and he said, now would it have been so hard for you to just have called us? Now immediately he started rolling up his sleeves and he fixed the broken pieces of every piece of furniture in my apartment as his wife and daughter took my dog Bandit out for a walk. I'm telling you, I must have done everything wrong. He had all the tools, he had the giant tool belt and he was ready and he went to town. Like I said, they knew they needed to come. This family, they overwhelmed me with kindness and fellowship. I mean, it's a simple thing, really, that they came to check on me, and it meant so, so much. It helped me feel like I belong, like I didn't actually have to be alone. I didn't have to be this independent, roaring woman. And never again will I ignore the number of cartoon people on the IKEA instruction manual. But more importantly, never again will I ignore the opportunities before me in fellowship 
with such wonderful and kind people as those that are found within the church. Life is a journey that we need not walk alone. None of us gets to become who we are without the help of others. Building a bed or a house or a temple, that is one matter. The number of hands and feet needed is fairly fixed. But I wonder, if there was an IKEA instruction manual of faith, how many cartoon people would be inside? For the grander construction of God's kingdom, God's will, what would be listed under the materials needed? Ezra was reading the manual to the people as he began, They all shouted, Amen! Amen! They were willing, they were ready and open to transformation so that they may listen and understand and recognize the building blocks that they would need to begin their work. I think people in this moment recognized the awesomeness of God. And when we say awesomeness, we mean the grandeur, the mightiness, the bigness that is God. We are so quick to recognize and be comfortable in the gentleness and hospitality and grace of God, but we often struggle to know the magnitude of our God's being. Like the lost sheep, these people had been found again, and like the prodigal son, they were running towards God with arms wide open. And God, like the Father, was running back at them with his arms wide open as the word was being proclaimed once again in Jerusalem. This moment was filled with power. And the people screamed, Amen! Amen! So be it the truth and wonders of God for us, so be it! So be it that we will be a better people. We will be a people of God once more, living our lives guided by the laws that God has gifted us. Thanks be to God, we are here, we are alive, and we are rebuilding a fallen nation. For God is our strength and our joy. Jesus had 12 disciples. Moses had Aaron and Miriam. Paul had Timothy. Philippians 4 says we can do all things through God who strengthens us. Romans 8 says if God is for us, who can be against us? And Matthew 18 says where two or more are gathered, there I will be also. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, now we are the body of Christ and each of us a member of it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, encourage one another and build each other up. In Nehemiah 8, our passage today, God is our strength and our joy. Do you know the number one reason why people visit a church for the first time? It's because someone invited them. It's the number one reason. And do you know why visitors become members? It's because they were welcomed into a community that cares about each other enough to want to see those people again and to know them and become a part of their lives. Fellowship is essential to the faith. God never intended for us to be alone on this journey, and Christ ensured in his death that we never need to be. And he sent us an advocate, his Holy Spirit, to live within us and move in us to be the church in the world. Friends, this is not the church. This is the building of the church. You are the church, every single one of you. And together we are stronger because within each of us is a little piece of God's spirit. 
And when we combine our forces of love and compassion and care and joy, we can build a better tomorrow for all of us. All of us. Together, like the people of God in our passage, we can have a hope of doing things much greater than we have ever imagined. Together, we can build the kingdom that God has asked for us to create. And we can ensure that no one, no one ever feels alone, that the sick are visited, that the leaders are encouraged, the committees are cheered on, and that the work is never too great to lose hope. Together we have fallen, and together we will rise to greater heights. And may we be grateful that we have never had to live without the Word of God being freely presented to us. We have the greatest gift of God to be our instruction manual and guide through this life. And today's passage has way too many cartoon people on it to fit in the manual, if you were wondering. It calls for everyone. Every single one. So in this time of turmoil in our world and change within our communities, let us rejoice that we have God's guiding words to lead us into the future. And that we have each other. That we can lift one another up when we fall and take this journey together in joy. Because God's strength and love that flows among us in our joy, it is our hope and our salvation. All who are lost have never been alone, and they will be found again. Have hope and know that nothing, nothing, no government, no army, no task, no pandemic is mightier than our God. So let us rejoice and rebuild. This is the day that the Lord has made, and you have been called to the task. This is your time. This is your calling. Our God is an awesome God. Thanks be to God. And in response and according to our scripture this morning, there is really only one thing to say, my friends. So brothers and sisters in Christ, can I get an amen? amen. Louder, amen. amen. Thank you. This is the word of God for us today. So be it. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, today we bask in the light of your hope in company with the wide family whom you give us, all our brothers and sisters in your creation. Because we know the steps ahead are not steps we take alone, we lift our hearts to you with gratitude. May we in ways ongoing sense gratitude for the love of those around us and for the fleeting moments day by day that convey beauty and inspiration. Receive our thanksgiving also for those who beyond the veil of death dwell in your everlasting kingdom. Keep us in communion with them and them in communion with us. From your love, prepare us to serve with others. Beckon us to place our collective burdens of brokenness with you in order to experience the wholeness of your grace droplets freely showered upon us. May our minds, talents, hands, and feet serve you each day as we make our way to you on this journey which is life. We pray for our loved ones, our families near and far, and for all who are sick, troubled, lonely, 
or in pain. And for those who travel, work long hours, and who have not enough time to spend with those close to them. Be with all who grieve, bestowing peace and strength among them through challenges of navigating new paths. Where the threats of war loom, we pray for peace. As complications of pandemic woes remain, bestow among educators, doctors, and first responders your gifts of endurance, passion, knowledge, clear-mindedness, and renewal. For children who have entered preschool and kindergarten not yet enjoying seasons without masks and social distancing, for the parents who juggle changing schedules and shutdowns, for the small business owners and all who are struggling, God be with us and work in us to build positive, healthy ways forward together. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would you stand and join us in singing together hymn number 611, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. surpass all human understanding. And let us go forth this day when we are aware and even when we are unaware, surrounded by the love and the mercy and the steadfastness of God who strengthens us. In the name of that one who is sovereign, Son, and Spirit. And we say together, Amen.